Hey everyone, it's now early spring. It is April 18th, 2023. And for the time being, we're having an unusually warm stretch of weather here in Maine. I do expect us to get more frost, so I'm not gonna be planting anything yet. I'm gonna start it indoors May 1st, and I'll take my chances in the second week of May. Our growing season doesn't start officially until June 1st, but I'm you're usually pretty safe in the middle of May up here. So I just bought these containers at the Home Depot on sale. They were trying to get rid of last year's stock before ordering the new stuff. So this giant container here, that is going to be a planter for flowers. Nice up off the ground. I could easily put a fence around the inside of it. That would keep a lot of things out. I might put tomato plants in it. Now, so I don't use up all the soil I just bought, all this good potting soil. I am going to move this to a part of a yard where I have a nasty fire pit that's made out of these cinder blocks. It's just an eyesore. So I'm going to backfill all that into here to get rid of it and then fill the top of it with really good soil. That'll also help it drain really good, having a bunch of chunks of concrete down there. I will take the plug out so it can just drain so the plants don't get flooded. And the really low one here I bought because this is going to go somewhere in the woods. I'm just testing it to make sure it holds water because I just returned another one where the gasket around it was leaking. It looks like it got dented. So, also this weekend, the Home Depot had a really good sale on potting soil. These right here were five bags for $10, and they also had the same sale with mulch. With this mulch right here, and you guys will see what we're going to use this grass seed for. I just bought three of these nice wooden pots. They're made out of cedar wood, and they are stained dark brown. I'm going to start off today by taking some bricks. It fits in there perfectly. It covers half the hole. I just, I'm just doing it this way because it's really cheap. You could put down a screen or something. Just make sure the screen isn't the type that'll rust. Then I'm going to pour gravel just around the bricks. And each of these pots, I bought three bags of soil. If it's too much, we'll throw the rest of it into the garden. Right up here on the next step, here's another one. And these, this was actually a really good thing. I told you one of those other metal ones had a leak and I returned it. Because I returned it to the Home Depot and they had no more of them, bought these at Tractor Supply. And these are very inexpensive, so I was very happy about that. I'm going to dig a hole today. I'm going to put one of these in the ground, nice and flush with the lawn. So when I'm mowing the lawn can go right over it nice and easy just got to make sure there's no frogs around it at that moment and yeah that'll be nice i'm gonna put cattails in this because yeah that was my main point of buying low ones i'm gonna make a bunch of like frog hatcheries the other one i'm not gonna bury in the ground but i'm gonna bring it deep into the woods and I'm going to build a ramp with soil, and that's what the grass seed's going to be on, the ramp. The insides of them, in case they ever get low in the sun, especially when I'm not around to top them off every day, I'm going to put a piece of stainless steel chicken wire, which won't rust away, down inside it. So no matter how low the water gets, frogs and stuff, a little mouse, whatever goes in there, can still get out. That'll be good. And I also got this really small one over here. This was only $17. Same idea. Why am I putting a bunch of these tubs around my forest? That's because last year they, we had a drought. Every year the frogs have pools of water in the woods because my property is typically a swamp. Also in the drainage ditch, there's always frogs. Last year it was so dry, all those places dried up. Probably thousands of frog eggs and tadpoles just died when the water disappeared. We tried to take as many as possible in buckets and release them in the ponds in the yard here. But now we have more places to put them. And these will actually warm up in the sun a lot. The ones that are in the woods, they're going to be pretty shaded. This one, it's not going to overheat. In fact, the frogs will love this thing having full sunshine. They'll grow fast. They'll love that. And this will grow a lot of algae in the sun. I got these pots right over here for free on the side of the road. Brought them home and I'm now realizing they're not the best. But I think this is like a plastic that actually peels off the pots. This is a peach tree that I bought last year for $80. It had a slow death throughout the year. It just kept losing leaves every day. 
and now it's so brittle. I think I can just, well, it's not that brittle yet, but it is completely dead. It's not coming back. This is going to be removed, and this is where the pond is going to go. With the unseasonably warm weather, the frogs are already out. So far in this pond that has been established for a while, last night there was four frogs. At the moment, I'm not seeing any. Don't know where they went, but this time of year, frogs can bounce in and out of hibernation if it, we get another deep freeze. Look at this. All the solar fountains survived the winter and are working. Yeah, I just left them out here all winter. This thing froze solid. Still working. Even the little solar pump. This is more of a filtration system. You see there's moss. It pumps the water up there through all the moss. The frogs love sitting in it. That also makes the water warmer. Pretty soon this whole area will be shaded. Those are all raspberry bushes and a tamarack tree. The frogs love it. I don't mow up to this pond on purpose, and I might do it with the other. It's nice to have the option of it being flat for the mower can get up to it, but the frogs love hiding in the covering there. Now, how is my really big 6,000 gallon pond we built last year doing? It looks good, but unfortunately it has a giant issue with it. So, the middle of this is as deep as four feet. In the middle of winter when the water table was low, I noticed something. It was sagging severely in the center. It has a leak in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait until like August, the time of year when our water table is the lowest and that is when I'm gonna find the leak. Wherever it drops down to, I'll just severely look at the edge and hope it's not what I think. I saw a deer in here, and I think its feet may have gone right through the liner somewhere. But it is full because our water table is literally this high, a couple feet below the ground. I do live in a swamp after all. Now you see over here, this is the whole reason I built the pond. This is more of a drainage project. This is coming out of my basement, that water right there, to eliminate our sump pump. Working pretty good. This is why a, a main reason why the pond is also staying full. This thing on a good day is trickling like a faucet. Today it's just dripping because it's getting warm out. It's slowing down. The worst I ever saw it was after a rainstorm. That was blasting like a fire hose one time. If you look in the middle of the pond right there. Um, right up there. Those are actually frog eggs that were probably just laid in the past couple days. So we're going to have tadpoles galore. And the frogs aren't even active yet. They're going to be laying so many more eggs. Like I said last year during the drought, it was sad. So many of the ponds were drying up. So we brought as many tadpoles back as we could save. We probably released a couple hundred frogs into this one little pool to save them from the woods. We weren't really concerned about the frogs because they can easily find the other waterways around here, but the tadpoles, I mean, giant egg masses. And you see this pond has a drain over on the other side. It's not even up to the pipe, which is the number one concern because it's being fed right now and it's not even up to the drain over there that leads to the road's drainage ditch. So we're just going to have to keep this thing monitored. But overall, the pond looks nice. Nothing it collapsed. The grass is growing nice. The solar fountain in here, we did have one of them break. If you looked at my review video of all the fountains, it was the white one. It shattered over the winter because water got inside it somehow. Now this one right here is a very powerful fountain when it does work. It sprays feet into the air. It has a wire coming up here to this big panel. And I don't know why, it's hit or miss. It works some days and some days it doesn't. And even before winter it was doing that. All right, everyone, so first thing is first. We gotta get that tree out of the ground. Then I'm gonna put this here. And with my shovel, I'm gonna press into the ground all around it so I know where I'm digging going to take out all the sod so I can reuse this grass somewhere else and all the overburden there's a hole in the yard that's been sinking a little bit every year like a really slow sinkhole 
it's all going to get thrown in there to even out the lawn. And then later on, final, when we're finally putting it in right before we fill it, we'll make sure the bottom is very nice that it's sitting on, and we'll come out with a level. All right, everyone, I brought over one of the solar fountains. I'm gonna leave it upside down so it doesn't burn out. Now I got some cattails, which will give the frogs a lot of good cover from predators. And I'm also thinking about maybe putting hosta bulbs in the soil around it, because they'll drape over and have a lot of cover on the outside where they would be sitting out of the water. So I think I'm gonna put the cattails in the, this part of the pond. They need something to anchor into and this sandy soil will also be good for the bacteria cycle to start up right away. 
got all these bulbs from the cattails. All right, that'll stop them from floating, hopefully. Can even put some rocks in there. Cattails are awesome at purifying water. They'll make sure this thing stays nice and healthy. A perfect use for all those rocks. Ooh, we had another tree come down during the last windstorm. This tree already had a, a crack starting, but I gave it a chance to heal itself because I've seen other trees, if they have like a decade, this whole crack could just fill in and fix itself. But nope, that tree is done. That's going to have to come down. So out here in the woods, I have this little bridge. I have the camera on it time lapsing because I'm trying to... I'm hoping it made a video because this little stream here flooded over the entire bridge with ice and that right there should have a time lapse of it thawing out. I got to fix the railing on the bridge there but you see this little tiny trickle of water that's only there after a huge rainstorm or after the spring thaw. This was going pretty hard before. You see where its little stream bed goes and it just dries up right there. The thing is this little pool back here this wet area usually sticks around for a while and frogs last year laid a whole bunch of eggs in it then it dried up and they all died so this year before the tree frogs even start reproducing you can hear their calls starting but it hasn't got there's not many of them out of hibernation yet so i'm going to try to put this little pond in out here see these things here 
I'm going to use those kind of like a landfill. Those were extra supports that I didn't need when I put this bridge together. This is all reused materials. So this little stream for when this dries up, I'm going to put this here. I'm not going to sink it in the ground like a pond, only because it's so hard to dig out here. When I put this bridge in so I could get to the other side of the property without making lots and lots of mud, I had to dig out a little channel right here so that this ground would dry out enough for this thing's supports. And that was so hard to dig that. There's so many roots and rocks. So I'm going to level this thing out. I will level the ground just a little bit. Then this is going to go here. Then one of these. Look at that. There's still the ground's still frozen under it. Uh, yeah, out here in the woods, I still don't think I'd be digging. So this is going to go right against it just to save soil. And I'm going to put a bunch of good soil, making a nice ramp going up to it on each side. Plant grass seed. I have nice grass seed that's supposed to like the shade. And then once that grows in, frogs can go in and out of it freely. In, in case I'm not around to keep topping it off with water, I'm going to put the screens like I showed you on the other that they'll be able to climb up out of. In like the last week, the ticks really started to come out. But typically... See all this poop all over the place? We have a bunch of turkeys that are always hanging out around here because I feed them. I'm hoping they make another round through the property. They will take care of all the ticks. They, it was so bad three years back, and turkeys showed up a couple days later, never saw a tick again that year. So, this thing's not going to be perfectly straight. It doesn't have to be. This thing will shift around. Probably it will not be straight because this whole area freezes and shifting because it's right next to the water. But I'm hoping the frogs will choose this instead of laying their eggs over there where it's just going to dry up and they all die. So now, how am I going to get all this water out here? This isn't flowing enough, unfortunately, to throw it over there. I'm going to do a, my, my own little bucket brigade. I'm going to put the water on the house in a, in a five-gallon bucket while I walk out here. And I'll keep swapping back and forth. And I should be able to get this filled up in like an hour doing that. Obviously, the walk out here is like 10 minutes. And it doesn't take 10 minutes to fill a bucket. So I'll just have it filling up on low. That'll be good. And I can see visually that it's a little crooked leaning towards the front. But I'm just going to put a stick or something under there. And now we're going to go get soil so we can build it up nicely. I usually don't bring the wagon out here this time of year. You can see it's still a little soft. It is still mud season and my yard is mostly a swamp. But I'm bringing out everything I think I need. And I think I might use this wagon to bring the water. Because I could do it in like two trips. The ground is pretty soft. These are all the trees that have been falling over during the storms. Cut them up for winter firewood. Cleaning the forest floor will allow new trees to grow in nice. This is the worst part of the trail. When that thing is loaded, going over these roots, usually leans over and it scrapes this tree. So I'm thinking I might take the soil out here and make a big notch in this root, making it flat. No, no, this tree, this thing is dead. Look at the top. It just broke off. There's no way this thing's going to survive that. The needles are even turning brown. I'm just leaving it standing because it's nowhere near the house. And it's got a lot of hollow holes for the squirrels. It's gonna crash. Woo! I'm, th I'm thinking I'm just gonna put this inside there. Maybe it'll grow moss on it and become some kind of weird island. I bet it's gonna float.
that looks pretty cool. That hill is going to take probably weeks of grass growing on it to strengthen up where something could actually walk up there. But that's mainly just for frogs can get in and out of it. Over time, as I get more overburdened from other projects in the yard, if I have any, I might just surround the entire thing eventually. Or maybe go grab some of that sod you, just, you saw me place inside a dip in the yard just because I didn't really know what to do with it after... There was a lot more dirt than expected coming out of that hole. You saw I filled that little sinkhole in the yard and a little other depression next to it. So this is good. Angled it like that to keep it straight and it's bent over inside the hill. That's never going to come off unless something forcefully rips it out. Yeah, I just hope something big like a coyote or a bear doesn't come mess this up before it really strengthens. But this water is about to dry up. So, the frogs will move over there. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm kind of slowing down because of the heat. It's been in the mid-80s every single day here in Maine this week. And that's not usual for April, not at all. We're supposed to still be, be frosty and snowy into May. I just realized, halfway to the house, we have a well. I don't need to carry buckets that far, and this will be fun. I think it's warm enough now that this thing won't freeze solid. Let's dewinterize the well for the year. So with one of these wells, you always want to make sure if you live in a cold climate that there's no water sitting inside it because it can freeze and crack the brittle cast iron. What you do is you got to take a little bit of water, any water, pour it inside there because there is a rubber diaphragm. When it dries out, look at that, no compression at all. We're not going to get that working. Make sure the diaphragm that piece of rubber is in water. Give it like 10 minutes, it will absorb the water, it'll swell, then you'll get good compression, it'll start working. We can also clean out this nasty drinking bowl I put here a while back. I remember the bear and raccoons were using it last year. And see, I always put that thing just in case a mouse or something falls in, it can get out. Now, you may be asking, why am I putting standing water all over the yard? Aren't I worried about mosquitoes? I'm not. If I lived in a city, I would be, but out in the country, any standing water like this is going to get water skimmers on it in the summer, and they eat mosquitoes. And there's also tree frogs all over the property. None of these have ever turned into a mosquito pool. And you could always put a solar fountain in there. It'll agitate it all day. And many of the ones I have have battery backups that run all night, making ripples on the water, and the mosquitoes can't land on it. All right, everyone, it's only been two minutes, and this thing's already swelled enough it's got compression. It's going to start working. What do you think? Is it going to be all rusty and nasty? I did put a iron pipe on the thing. Let's see if there's any rust coming out of it. First go of the year. Here we go. It's crystal clear. You saw how the water started as being white? That might be because the pipe was galvanized. I don't know. But it's crystal clear now. Let's fill that back up for the animals. And we're going to fill up all these buckets here and put them in the wagon and pull them out into the woods. We'll have to make probably five trips. I couldn't find that many buckets and we need 50 gallons of water. That's about 100 feet in. Wow, that water is freezing cold. I think I'm just gonna carry them two buckets at a time to the pond. And that's 10 gallons of water, five trips. That, I don't think that's that bad. Uh, we have a tick right here, a stupid tick. Yeah, we've been seeing a lot of them today. But this well works great. I can fill a five gallon bucket in like 20 seconds. It's actually 
maybe faster than the house. This is going to be a good workout, bringing all these into the woods. I'm probably going to have to do six trips because they're not quite full. All right, everyone, it is now completely full. I'm going to go get the watering cans, water the two hills, get that grass growing. All right, everyone, I think I might come back out here later and put peat moss over the top of this. It'll help it retain a lot more moisture. And it might hide the seeds because I'm afraid if the turkeys come out here, they're just going to take down the whole hill looking for seeds. I'd rather them not notice it, so I'm going to put like peat moss all over the top of that. I like to go and put the bucket back on top of it so debris doesn't get inside here. All right, everyone, now I'm heading down this other trail. Right here, it's pretty squishy. Lots of water. See as I step? It's very, very... Oh, uh, there's a tick on me. Very, very squishy. This time of year, anyways. Up here where I have the boardwalk, it's always squishy. And I love the moss. So that's why I built this, so I don't have to step on any of it. This smaller container is just going to stay here with ramps made out of chicken wire going in and out because you see around the well that is the actual water table see that water sitting around there I've seen frogs in there last year they even laid eggs and there was tadpoles this water level is always high but even if it drops a couple inches that dries up so I'm hoping if this is here the frogs will choose this instead or at the very least I can easily pick them up with my hands and throw them in here I'm gonna add some dirt in there to start a biological cycle. This much cheaper container, I'm not confident can survive the winter freezing. So that's why I'm not gonna actually make this one completely permanent. But we're gonna start up another well, and we're gonna see. This one I predict there's gonna be, it's gonna come out orange, I think, you see? This well actually is made out of something else or the paint is just horrible on this other well. But last year, even sitting a week, it would come out bright orange. So let's see what comes out of this. We'll flush it. We'll fill that little thing up. And now that the pressure-treated wood has been drying out for a year, I'm going to clean this up, and maybe in the summer I'll give it a quick water seal. All right, what do you guys think? Is it going to be very orange? And see this handle? I am left-handed with most things. Well, I shouldn't say that. I'm actually right-handed when I'm working, but I write with my left hand. There was a tree here that I liked. It was birch, but I had to cut it down. It's so close to the well. So I'm going to loosen the bolt up, and I'm going to have the handle on the right side so more people feel good using it. Oh, I forgot. We have to pour water in to get that diaphragm going. Zero compression. You're not going to get anywhere. Um, I'm hoping I can get just water out of here. I think I can get water out of this puddle to start it. Totally, I just got like half a gallon. Got to pour it in the top. And we got to let that thing sit a couple minutes now.
It doesn't take long. It's been less than two minutes and I'm already feeling compression. Let's try to get this going. This is gonna be nasty. I don't wanna stand near it. Not the best compression yet, but we got something. There we go. Wow, it's not even that orange. Maybe it's because I winterized it. Last year, there was always water sitting in here, and maybe that's what caused it to rust, because that was not bad at all for sitting all winter. And also, what do you guys think of this platform so the water doesn't just go back in underneath? It's also a good spot to put the bucket to fill it up. I don't know what this thing is for, but it was free on the side of the road, and it works perfect as a little sink trough. All right, that went pretty fast. Nice. I don't know about you guys, but this fire pit is kind of ugly. Years ago, there was a fire pit here made out of cinder blocks. The heat of the fire destroyed the cinder blocks, so I decided that was a lot of work to bring to a landfill. So what I did was I made kind of a landfill out of all the deteriorated blocks. It's just a big mound of sand and concrete. And I tried to make it look good by putting nice rocks on just the front of it. I'll show you what the back looks like, but I'm gonna take all of that, including the wood, everything there except the nice rocks, Use it to fill up this so I don't have to buy as much potting soil. I'm gonna put it right there up against the raspberry patch and none of this is gonna be here. Easier to mow the lawn and I'm gonna have a place for tomato plants. I'm gonna take the plug out of it so it can't fill up with water. This is meant to be an animal trough for horses and stuff to drink out of, but even if that, I think that might even get clogged. I might end up drilling more holes at some point. Yeah, I need a socket wrench to get that out. Yeah, you see up close, you're gonna need a socket wrench to pull that thing out. And I might drill more holes along it. This thing is supposed to be completely watertight. Yep, how many gallons is this thing? Does it say? I'm not seeing it on there. Oh, right there, 226 I think it is. Now, I obviously want this side facing the yard because it's nicer. It doesn't have the seam in it. So, let's get this out of here. This I was going to use to put a birdhouse on. This is from an old shower unit. It's actually got a lot of structural integrity to it. If we walk right over here, I can show you a birdhouse that we actually put on one of those poles. See this? It wiggles a little bit. That might be why the bird never used it. So you see, we got pretty nice rocks facing the house where I can see it. But you see the back? It's all this deteriorated junk concrete I'm just gonna use as fill. 
and I'm gonna get the shovel, level the whole yard out and plant grass in place. This is an unnecessary fire pit. All right, everyone, I'm gonna have to take a little break before I continue this, because I'm gonna get heat stroke if I don't. I'm really starting to feel the heat in the sun. So that thing is completely flattened. I'm gonna plant grass seed on top of it, and by the end of the season, you probably won't even know it was there. That needs to be mowed down. That was just a pile of firewood. That's also got a little depression in it that I might put some of this there. Because right now, I literally can't level it even anymore. See that? It's ice. The ground is still frozen underneath that thing. This, I am gonna throw away. There was a little bit too much of it. So over here, what you're seeing, everything here is all ash. That's very rich for plants. That goes down to about here. Then it's all concrete and sticks, and that stuff will slowly settle down in there, and the plant's roots can go down between all that stuff. Now, I'm just gonna come back out here with the shovel, grind it around, push it down in every nook and cranny as much as I can, and I think maximum five bags of miracle Grow potting soil on the top of it. Then we can put tomato plants in there, a couple tomato cages around there. It'll be nice. All right, so the brick is gonna go just to slightly cover the hole up. You could use a screen or something else if you had it, or just bigger gravel before the smaller stuff would, that would fit through the hole. I bought this, but I'd rather use this nice stone for something else, and I'm just gonna use cheap gravel that I had for the driveway.
Now this pot is much heavier duty. It doesn't have holes in the bottom. It just relies on the water seeping out through the cracks. So the holes aren't really that important, I feel, on the other one either. These are actually really nice pots. You see the inside's burnt, keeps it from rotting. It's also cedar, which helps it not rot for a long time. And they even let it sit around for a long time to make it rust and it already looks old. All right, everyone, so I just poured all this gravel in here to wash it. Now I'm gonna dump it and move this where I want it to be, and this will build another ladder for it. It's gonna be heavy. Ugh. Maybe I gotta lift it from this side. Yeah, that stone looks nice now. Nice and washed. I'll spray that down a little more because I know there's still a lot. I just got done spraying off the wagon, getting all the dirt off it, tipping it upside down, spraying out all the cracks and joints, and then I'm gonna go put it away. That's how I keep it from rusting, because I learned my lesson when I was a kid. I was given a wagon similar to this, left it outside, completely rusted, where the, it couldn't even hold anything after less than two years. But I've had this thing now for about four years, and it's been taking a real beating. You see all the gravel I'm on right now? I decided to gravel my entire 300 foot driveway during mud season, which was a mistake. What that, meant, what that means is the 10 wheel dump truck couldn't come in the driveway. The guy sunk two feet deep into the end of it. So I had to use this cart to move, um, let me think. I'm thinking that's at least 42,000 pounds of gravel and it held amazingly so these nice little pots are right here in the back of the house i have a little walkway here which is full sun so i plan on putting a whole ring of marigolds there and having a nice tomato plant in the middle the marigolds are a natural pesticide i found this moose it just has a slight broken antler that was free on the side of the road and it's nice dark wood it matches these pots i'm gonna grow something in them that's just a bunch of cans that I'm going to bring to get the five cents for. We have that bottle deposit here in Maine. I'm thinking I might put dirt in here, but I don't know what I really want to plant in there because it'll definitely die if I'm away for more than a week in the summer. That's why I put all the peat moss. These can hold themselves for probably weeks without being watered. All right, now here's that other pot in the front of the house. This I'm going to just put annual flowers in, you know. This my mom gave me. I had it in the house for a few weeks until the petals all started falling off. Those bulbs will come up every single year. This plant is usually... Okay, so this plant, what I like about tulips is they come up very early. They're frost tolerant. And you can put them anywhere because these things are completely done and dead before the trees even grow leaves. So you can plant them in the shade. Perfect. I like these in gardens because these come up and they are completely done before anything else even grows. I showed this in another video. What do you think of this? You see how it's not actual tunnels? They're like little squiggles. Is that mice that did that? This is definitely the mole. I'm thinking the whole thing may have been the mole, maybe burrowing underneath the snow. Entire property looks like this. This is the worst damage I've ever had from moles. Well, I'm going to take you over here for a walk. More mole damage. Look at all that. It's because I don't put down any pesticides in the yard. I don't want to because I want there to be lots of wildlife, frogs, bugs, 
Unfortunately, this year, some of my trees, I'm going to try something called a, uh, what do you call it? Root drench, which is a insecticide, and I am kind of forced to do it because we have the emerald ash borer killing every single tree on the property. I'm not going to put it at widespread through my woods. I'm just going to put it on my barrier trees because you can hear there's a highway that I want to leave blocked. Oh my gosh, look at these frogs. You see how their skin looks a little bit weird? There's so far four of them in this pond, but there'll be more. Look at this, they already laid eggs. There's a big egg mass right there. This whole thing will be full of tadpoles. Just give it a couple of weeks of warm weather. This thing used to be painted green, and it was in a bush at my dad's house. It used to scare me when I was little. But this winter, it's so badly cracked because it's ceramic. It's been outside for... Th no, this thing, it's been outside for three years up here in northern New England. But when my dad was in Massachusetts, it was in the yard for 30 years. And this winter finally just destroyed it. So, yeah, I think it's time for this guy to go in the garbage. This tree right here was a really, really tall one. This thing fell over across the power lines. It created a dangerous situation. The power was still on in the house, but the neutral wire was broken, so that means it was going down the lightning bolt. Look at this. I just planted a little tree in there, and eventually that should take over the rest of it. I have been collecting pallets. I am going to put a lot of firewood on these this year. See, these ones are on a slight hill, so I had to put it up with bricks. Yep, learned my lesson last year. Looks like a lot of firewood, right? All this was frozen to the ground. I learned my lesson. It's all going to be on pallets now. Right here, I just moved it onto the edge of the woods. Things can go in and out, and it has gravel in the bottom. Eventually, more silt will go in there as leaves fall in. And I just put a couple cattail bulbs in there. This turtle's kind of cool. It's made out of cast iron. It's made to store a hose in. But it's not very convenient. And it's also painted black. It would bake a rubber hose. All the overburden from that pond is right here. Nice and flat. The ground is probably going to keep sinking. This little sinkhole gets slightly deeper every single year. But that grass will grow in in a few weeks. And this was another little depression. Eventually that'll smooth itself out also. So this pond came out pretty good. Nice and level, can get the lawnmower right up to it, although I'm probably gonna let it grow in like a foot around it. Frogs will be much more comfortable with hiding area, and that'll also protect them so I don't run them over with the mower. Cattails, those things, once they're established, they grow fast. So eventually I'm gonna have to start killing some off once they start taking over the pond. That's why I put a few inches of dirt in the bottom so they have a place to anchor and root themselves. This came out pretty good. These right here, I'm going to dispose of those. I think I might just bury them in a hole somewhere since there's not many of them left. So this came out nice. Got a good solid 8 inches of nice rich soil at the top. And the rest of it is just ash and broken concrete. I'm going to plant something in here. I was going to do tomatoes. I'm thinking I might. this might be my hot pepper area. Going down into the squishy area. Probably two-thirds of this property are unusable unless you were to fill it in because it's swamp. But I love the swamp. It attracts so much wildlife. For the first time in two years, I saw moose tracks out here the other day. Didn't see the moose. I don't have any trail cameras active except the one pointing downwards. See all the water right here? This is... If I follow that up, it goes to that little bridge where I put everything else. This forest sustained so much damage last year. It was either a microburst or something. We lost, this whole area just blew down. It's like an acre of land, but at least we have firewood. The reason most of them blew down is because the ground was soft when the wind was high after a rainstorm. Most of these weren't even affected by the bugs. And this is a habitat pile. Broke it down. Lots of debris. I'm slowly going to keep working on cleaning this up. Because this is a giant forest fire hazard, I think. This
This used to be such a dark forest with so much nice healthy moss. Not anymore. You see these log piles were stacked when there was over a foot of snow on the ground. It's amazing more of them didn't tip over. The rest of these are still very structural. I looked at them yesterday. That one right there fell over. What you're seeing here, this is evergreen. Not as good for heating a house. It only has like half the BTU value, which means you need twice as much since it's not hardwoods. So what you see here is probably almost a full year of heating, but I'm gonna let that sit out here in season for a couple years. Here we are back to the top of where I was pointing out that erosion area. Since this morning when we started, the water is getting closer. It's slowly drying up with all this hot weather. And right here for the frogs, we got this. I can even start to hear tree frogs now that we're getting later in the day. Tonight we're going to go to an area that I know always dries up. It's always sad. Seeing that they're already starting to lay eggs, the frogs, we got to go. We're going to go around the woods tonight to a bunch of these little areas. And we're going to try to collect as many eggs as possible and put them into these things to save them. That was devastating last year, seeing thousands of frog eggs and tadpoles just dead on the ground when everything dried up. I'm not sure how many of you actually saw me building this garden last year, but this is unusual weather for April, so I'm not even going to attempt planting because I know it's going to get cold again. There's multiple days with deep freezes next week happening, supposedly. So here, I think indoors, May 1st, I'm going to start growing probably dozens of seedlings. Then we're going to come out here and rip up this liner. The purpose of this liner is I rototilled it last year. This creates heat, making sure everything germinates and it dies from lack of sunlight. We will get this up and maybe rototill it again and plant. You see in the background, the well is very close, the manual well. I got a solution for that. Let me show you something cool. Oh, these electrical wires are everywhere because I'm hoping that might keep the bear out. But I was told by the guy who sold me the electric fence at Tractor Supply, if you have a bear that's around, they don't even feel electric fences. You actually have to put peanut butter on some of the wires to get them to get the shock on their nose and then they'll stay away forever. Even low wires, hopefully I'll notice something trying to dig underneath before they even get in there. So an electric fence is just made to startle an animal. A bear getting a little jolt on his nose is not going to hurt him. But he'll learn the first or second time. This I bought right here because that's enough footage to get from the pump well over to the garden. I can flood all my trenches just in case should ever hit the fan. Also been keeping the ash right here. This is where I've been dumping out most of our fireplace ash from heating in the winter. Mix some of that in with the garden when I take the covering off. Solar electric fence, so it has a grounding rod there. I brought it in the house for the winter. Kind of made a mess in the yard, you see? I was using ash in the winter when it was snowy to draw. This one was a smiley face. That, I don't know what that may have been. This looks like a, oh, if you saw my video, that's the one eye smiley face, Cyclops smiley face because I ran out of the ash. And right here was a big heart in the snowy hill. You could see it from the house in the winter. I'm wondering if the grass will grow greener in that heart pattern. Probably not, but the grass will definitely benefit from it. If you guys are interested, I will mainly be posting my garden updates on my other channel, New England Wildlife and more. I posted a video of building that big garden there last year, and I will continue doing that. Like in two weeks, like I said, I'm gonna be starting the seedlings. I'll make a little video of that inside the house. I'll make a video planting them, taking care of it. And what I think I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm actually gonna put two cameras in case one of them fails. I'm gonna put two trail cameras on the garden with a time-lapse mode, but I'm gonna have it so few pictures, it's only gonna take like two pictures a day, then we can have a time-lapse, combine it, showing the whole garden, the progress through the entire year. So, tonight will be a fun night. 
gonna go ahead and look for frogs to throw in these ponds look for eggs that are in puddles that I know are definitely gonna dry up before they turn into frogs so we'll go ahead and rescue a whole bunch and bring them back to these spots just because of the weather we're already getting I think we're gonna have an even worse drought this year just because of hasn't rained in a long time it hasn't snowed in a long time it's not a big deal when it's not that hot but this week almost every day has been 30 degrees above normal for this time of year which is a little concerning i think we're going to have another hot year with droughts It's now dark enough that the sprinkler started working again in battery mode. It shuts off when it is too dim out for the sun to power it, but not quite dark enough for the sensor to go on. But now we're doing pretty good. That's what will keep mosquitoes away, that thing being agitated. All right, everyone, I'm about to go walk around in the swamp and we're going to go see if we can rescue any frog eggs before they hatch or bring back frogs that you can tell are full of eggs. We're walking down to the big pond. Listen. There are so many frogs. Take a look. Right there, a bunch underwater. Lots of mating frogs. One there. Wow, there's so many frogs. There's gotta be dozens of them in this pond and they're all coming out of hibernation today. Yesterday there was only a couple, now there's a lot. They're all mating, so that means probably by tomorrow there's going to be thousands of eggs in this pond alone so let's go and see if we can rescue any from the woods thankfully there's not that much traffic at this hour but right here on the edge of the highway there's all these drainage ditches and see this water last year the frogs laid a lot of eggs in here and they all ended up dying because this goes away pretty quickly oh and guess what you won't believe it the turkeys were there today, scratching at the ground, stealing all my grass seed. Alright everyone, after about a maybe 15 minute walk down the highway, this is the same drainage area for the highway the frogs were last year, and it ended up drying up and so many died. Wow! Look at them all. Yeah, so I don't see many eggs, but there'll be so many tomorrow, we're going to come back and take them. Because this swamp will certainly dry up if it's as dry as it was last year. And that was really sad coming out here and seeing that many. Yeah, all the frogs are in this one little area, like this five foot diameter circle. So... Being very careful not to step on them. They are everywhere. And you see how they're hiding from me? Down into the mud where I'm stepping. So I gotta be careful. I'm gonna grab a little bit of water. Alright everyone, we are back the following night. You can hear all the frogs again. Last night, most of the frogs hid. We didn't get to take any home. 
but we're mainly after the eggs because the eggs and tadpoles are what are vulnerable since this is most likely going to dry up again like it did last year probably the year before that too i don't know i wasn't around back then you hear tons of frogs there's you're probably not going to hear anything on the highway today it's now midnight there's barely anyone driving around but I am going to reach back in this bush because this is where I hid my bucket and net yesterday. Got it. Let's see if there's any egg masses. Oh my gosh, the amount of frogs again. Remember like yesterday, they're probably all going to hide. I already see some eggs. Just got two frogs. Yeah, they're all gonna hide now. See any egg masses we can take? I know I just saw one, where was it? Yeah, all the frogs are in the process of hiding. But we are gonna bring home two. Oh, that one. That one I thought was really fat. Full of eggs, that's why it's fat. Yep, just like last night, almost every frog is gone in like 10 minutes. I'm just looking for some eggs. Thought I just saw some. I wanna be careful treading in here because they are just hiding underneath the dirt. Maybe we'll come back tomorrow and look for some eggs. There's already so many eggs in my yard. I'm amazed they barely laid any here yet. Oh my gosh. Grab the bucket. Grab the bucket. You guys understand that this stuff is all going to dry up. And I see the mother load of eggs. Yeah, all the frogs are gone now. But look at how many eggs. We're going to rescue all these eggs. You know what? I think I can easily pick them up with my hand. This is going to feel really, really weird. Yeah, I'm looking around. It looks all centralized. All the eggs are right here. Wow, it feels like jello. They're all stuck together. Wow. Look at this frog egg sack. Put them in there. I just really don't want to see these guys die like they did last year. I just want to save as many frogs as possible. Because even when I bring them back to my house, which is like a 20 minute walk away from this swamp, these frogs, once they reach adulthood, they can go wherever they want. They don't have to stay in those pools. I'm just putting them there where I'm going to feed them, put sprinklers in there so they don't get polluted i mean the little solar fountains it's kind of very convenient how they're all stuck together if they weren't i would never get them so many frog eggs i can't believe it two more sacks now obviously one of these can't come out of one frog can it or is the just a little dot in the middle of it the egg and the rest of it swells up like an orby? Is that how these work? Because literally I've seen ones that have been out of the water, like I was saying how they all dried up. They kind of shrivel up like an orby in the sun and even after putting them back in water, the inside turned white, meaning it was obviously dead. I don't see any more frog eggs. I'm going to keep the net out so I don't crush any. Yeah, you know, I honestly feel bad taking the frogs. I'm going to let these guys just stay here with their friends. But I am going to take the eggs. Frogs aren't that kind of creature. They're not going to miss their eggs. But these eggs, I'm going to make sure they grow up and have a good home. And I have lots of tadpole food. Tadpoles also love goldfish flakes i'm leaving here carefully so i don't crush any looking around i see a couple frogs there 
and looking around in these pools I don't see any more clusters now we're gonna go walk back down the highway through the woods back to my property and we're gonna put these in those little pools of water and I'm gonna put most of them in the pool that you saw me dig deep into the ground just because it's right out my front door and I can easily feed them every single day I'll put a smaller amount in the woodsy ones because to be honest frogs they don't develop as fast if they're in a cold spot. Heat and the warmth of the sun is what turns a tadpole into a frog. And they will turn into a frog in only about a month or two, a frog lit where they can come out of the water, if they have full sun. If they're in the woods, sometimes when they're really cold, they can honestly actually stay a tadpole for multiple years when they're cold. And those things might freeze solid. So. If there are any of those guys in the ones that are above ground, I'm going to make sure they're all moved to the big pond at the end of the year so they don't freeze solid. But I know for a fact I am saving thousands of frogs here tonight, and they're still mating. I'm going to come back and look for more eggs tomorrow, and I'll put them in my big pond. The big pond is probably where most of them should go. I'm only going to put maybe one egg sack in those smaller pools because they would it would become too populated and polluted. But the bigger pools and the one next to the house that I can flush all the time, I'll put a whole bunch in there. All right, see you back at the house. All right, everyone, it's been about two days. Here's how the pond's doing. The water has not cleared up a lot because that fountain is actually broken. It's not working anymore. So I'm going to go online and I'm going to order a brand new fountain for each of these ponds to keep it circulating and nice and healthy. Now these eggs here will be fine in that muddy water for the time being. That giant 6,000 gallon pond last year was murky for over a month. So I'm going to put a few egg sacks in there. Another one. And we'll make sure they're well fed. There we go. Maybe we'll put one more in there. Uh-uh, it's breaking, it's breaking. Don't want to drop them on the ground. Feels just like Orbeez. All right, we're going to walk over to another pond. All right, over to this pond. We'll put a good amount in there too, because this is close enough to the house where every now and then, if a ammonia test comes back bad, I'll probably test them once a month or so. I can just put the garden hose in there and let it overflow for a few hours. There's another. You know, on my walk back, I had second thoughts. I was thinking about how shady it is in the woods, and I'm actually not going to put any frogs out there. I'm not. I'll let the tree frogs do that themselves, so I think I'm going to dump it all here. And I even brought back some mossy slime. Maybe that'll spread in there. It'll be nice for them. We'll dump all this in there. I think we accidentally got a water beetle too. I hope this means these frogs will be all right. We'll go looking for more of them tomorrow. Now that they're back here, the eggs really don't look like that many. So we'll probably find many more egg sacks in the next couple days. Last year, that mating ritual was going on for like four or five nights. And Tomorrow we'll bring them back and we'll throw them all inside the gigantic pond in the front yard, which already has like a dozen of these egg sacks out there from the frogs that we relocated and saved last year. So that's awesome. That giant pond and my small pond that has been here for already three years, there's multiple generations of frogs in there that we saved, which is amazing too. Now this right here... I'm going to have to make sure everything is out of this pond before winter. But that small one right there near the house, if there's no tadpoles, the frogs will be fine. The frogs, I imagine, all leave the pond. Well, certain frogs I know can freeze solid. I'm not sure, but they all survive the winter. And I hope today's video was interesting, everyone. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.